snatching random people's kid part theory. Let's go. What? You guys currently looking for kids? I see someone there, bro. Watch this. Oh yeah, this this is normal behaviour. <laughs> right, uh, to be fair, not too different to what a fair few TikTokers have been caught doing off camera. Okay, I'm not bringing back that old intro from five or six years ago. I just felt like putting it here to commemorate something. I am bringing back LMTH. Last month, this happened. A series where we take a look at some stuff that's happened over the last month that is quite funny. Will it last long? Who knows, but it's here now. So I hear you thinking, who is this child catching prodigy? His name is Remy, and he's recently been blowing up on TikTok for uh, stealing people's kids. Snatch of other people's kid, part two. Let's go! Are you looking for kids? Watch this, guys. <laughs> and this isn't just one of the things he does. This is all he does. This is his whole account. He does have a few other videos like this. Going into McDonald's and snatching random people's food, part one. Let's go! <laughs> it just ends there. I didn't cut off the end bit. He just didn't bother to do the rest of the video. And fair enough, I respect the boldness of it. You've already got the view from the intro and probably another one from people stunned in confusion. Why do the difficult bit when, when you can just not? Then he's also done a classic influencer move of exploiting homeless people by putting them on camera and doing a relatively small deed to make themselves look good. All right, what do you want? What type of food do you want? Can I have Big Mac meal, please? Yes, yeah, with Coke, please. Uh, wait, like and follow for more guys. Yeah, mate, couldn't forget the old like and follow message at the end. But Remy's real bread and butter is this stealing kids prank. I don't even know if you can call it a prank. Snatching my don't be put kid. Let's go. Part seven, what? <laughs> Internet clout has ruined the brains of this generation because this guy is he's not even making money off these. There is no real world benefit at all from him doing these. He's just doing it for the dopamine hit of him seeing the views go up and the likes go up. Like there is nothing in it for him except being seen as a massive child snatching weirdo. Snatching white people's kid parts 13. Let's Go. Okay, tell you what, say what you like about this guy, but at least he's equal opportunities and doesn't leave anyone out because of their race. Respect. For those of you saying I don't snatch white kids, today I'm gonna be snatching white kids. Oh mate, yes, you don't know this, but I'm actually the one that's been leaving those comments. I'm I'm, I'm very excited for this. It feels weird even saying that ironically. To clarify, I did not beg this guy to snatch white kids or any kids for that matter. Yo, what are you saying? What? What are you saying? <laughs> okay, I think you get at this point what these videos are, but what he says next in this video is very interesting. Bro, yeah, that came with a, with a big wood fam and chased me. And I ran. As soon as he left the park, I came back. I told you, boy. My shit is in stage. Notice how he said this shit isn't fake, and he does it at the start of this one as well. Snatching random people's kid. Let's go. Again, my videos aren't fake, but let's go. Now ignore if you can the fact it says part 16. Just focus on the fact he wants to emphasize that these aren't fake. Now, I know this may come as a shock to you, but they're fake. I know, I know, I know, I know you didn't see that coming. My heart shattered into a million pieces when I found out. But I don't know, it just seems really weird to make these videos as if you're stealing kids and they go, oh, it's all real, I promise. Like being a child abductor is a really weird thing to falsely confess to for TikTok attention. He even made this video. Excuse me, man. It was I don't know you. And if I see you close to my kids again, you'll be in trouble. Do you hear me? It was for TikToks, bro. We don't call the police if you. It was, it was for TikTok. I don't care. Shit. I don't care, man. I don't care, don't ever go close to my kids again. It was for TikTok though. I don't care. Better, better, don't leave it that way. I don't care. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. You're basically building this brand around yourself of almost being a nonce. It's so bizarre. In all my years, I've never seen someone so desperate for attention, they're willing to make themselves look like this. But that's not all we also sell a course for £1.99. Snatching kids social experiment, £1.99. This is to show parents how easy it is to get your taken away from you, and therefore we need to do everything to protect them. Ignore the cover photo. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the comfort is him just stealing a child. If you're a parent and you pay £1.99 for this course, please just surrender your children to social services. Mr. B! Mr. Beast was in trouble, kind of. Not really. This YouTuber slash musician slash influencer person, Rosanna Pansino, called out Mr. Beast for making it seem as though she didn't get top three in a challenge when in actuality she apparently did. She says both her and Quackity were replaced by Logan Paul and Lorray. And fair enough, she had every right to call this out. I would be pissed too. However, the way she handled the situation from this point forward is the worst possible way someone could have handled anything. So she made that statement and then Mr. Beast DM'd her trying to, you know, sort it out and everything. And as you can see from these DMs, Mr. Beast is trying to get on call with her to try and sort it out. And honestly, I don't know what she was expecting. Like this is probably the best possible outcome for her, him saying that he's going to sort it out. But how does she react to this? Um, she leaks the DMs as if these make him look anything but good and said, Mr. Beast kept pressuring me to get on the phone with him and would not answer any of my questions in writing. When I asked him to send the raw footage, he went radio silent. And then she followed that up with a series of very, very, over dramatic tweets. <laughs> a lot of which I can't find now because she's deleted them, but one of the best ones was the amount of DMs I'm receiving from people with similar stories. Please know that you are not alone. You are seen and your experiences are valid. This is about <laughs> this is about being cut out a bit early in a Mr. Beast challenge video. I mean, I'd be annoyed. It's an annoying thing, right? It's not that deep. You made it sound as though something really like traumatic has happened to you. You got cut out of a YouTube video. Like, it's annoying. I'd be pissed, but it's not this deep. It's not like life for Ruining stuff. A video surfaced of Charlie D'Amelio pretending to work at Walmart and it got over 100 million views for some reason. And people on Twitter were not happy about it because when are they ever? Watching someone who won the lottery of life gleefully pretend to do a minimum wage job that crushes people's hopes and dreams has me fantasizing about rebooting the French Revolution franchise for modern audiences. Rich people pretending to be poor will always piss me off. These multi-billionaires make videos like this mocking your entire existence and cosplaying the everyday struggle to appear relatable and most people somehow still eat this shit out. I really don't get it, man. And I'm sorry, but are you all fucking thick or something? I literally couldn't give one shit about Charlie D'Amelio. Honestly, not even one. But this is so obviously for an ad. It is so blatant. Like, this isn't someone shopping. She's not actually working there. Who buys, like, 200 bags of the same fucking crisps? You can see the camera flashes. This is so blatantly a photo shoot for an ad deal. And I can see how people would see this video once and be like, oh, this is really out of touch. She's pretending to have, like, a normal person job and be really happy happy doing it when she's actually like a rich TikToker. But ask yourself this. If you got offered a bag, like, I don't know, 100k to go into Tesco, put on the uniform and have some pictures taken of you scanning through 200 bags of Monster Munch, would you take it? If you're not daft, of course you would. I respect the hustle, Charlie. Keep it up. Get your bag. Oh, Big announcement. Following the video I'm about to show you, going out for pints with your mates will no longer be cool. One hundred pubs closed their doors in wake of this video dropping. Now, some of you may be going, "George, you're a twat. What's wrong with this?" And I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Imagine you're stood outside the pub, pint in hand, and your mate goes, "Hang on a sec, lads. Got to get a TikTok of us having some chit chat and a laugh here." He then proceeds to rest his phone up against a window ledge and film. It doesn't feel right. It's not natural, is it? If my friend did that, I would go as far as to cringe at them. Also, I can't speak for them because I don't know them, so I'm not going to make any assumptions. But <laughs> this is exactly how people with trust funds dress to try and fit in with ordinary people. I lived in East London for long enough to know this as fact. They seem like nice enough guys, but this video has ruined pints and chit chat for me, so I can't forgive them. There's this clip that's been circulating the last few days and it is so fucking brilliant, I just have to share it with you. Did you read the Bible? I've back to front, I've read the Old Testament, the New Testament. What was that feeling for you? Beautiful, there's nothing you can ask me about the Bible now, I can tell you, and that's not showing off. I genuinely like you to do that. Anything, anything you could think of. He seems very confident about his Bible knowledge here. So when asked what his favourite Bible verse is, what, what do you think he says? But what's the best verse on it that stands out to the you? The best verse is, if you stop at every dog that barks, you'll never reach your destination. That's my favourite verse. <laughs> It's not even, there's such an easy one. The classic GCSE RS exam answer. Love thy neighbour as thyself. That is such an easy answer if you're looking for an easy cop out. That's not even from the Bible, it's from Winston Churchill. It's basically about, you don't stop at every dog that barks. 
because you'll never reach your destination. Oh, really, mate? Is that what that means? Sorry, I, it was just a bit too complex for my little mind. Glad you clarified it. Like and subscribe for more. Last month, this happened.